Thank you. Our next witness. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's a great pleasure to be able to introduce one of my longtime friends and a woman that is very highly respected in Oklahoma, and that is Terry Neese. Terry, welcome. It's good to have you here in front of our Small Business Committee. Ms. Niece, Mrs. Neese has served as a distinguished fellow at the National Center for Policy Analysis. In this role, she develops ideas to help small business owners make better financial and health care decisions. She's the owner of a small business, a family farm, and has founded several organizations to educate and train small business owners. Mrs. Neese has been recognized by Fortune magazine as one of the Power 30, the most influential small business women in uh, Washington. And Inc. Magazine has named her as one of four top advocates for, ab for entrepreneurs in the United States. So we are thrilled today that she was able to make time in her schedule to join us from Oklahoma. And welcome, Terry. It's good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be with you. Um, Thank you, Congresswoman Fallon, and Madam Chairwoman, good to see you. It's been a while, and I appreciate you holding this important hearing. Members of the committee, thank you for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to discuss the detrimental impact of the estate tax on small business and their families. Today, I am speaking on behalf of the National Center for Policy Analysis, a nonprofit, nonpartisan public policy research organization dedicated to developing and promoting private alternatives to government regulation and control. The NCPA recently started the Family Policy Center, where we focus on finding private solutions to, to issues faced by women, families, and small business. <coughs> they are headquartered in Dallas, Texas, and I live and work in Oklahoma. Support for the estate tax is based on three major claims. First, inheritances are a major source of wealth inequality. Second, the tax provides significant revenue for the federal government. And third, the individuals required to pay the tax can easily afford it. These are, however, all myths. Not only the rich, but lower and middle class Americans, especially small business owners, should be concerned if the estate tax is not repealed or maintained permanently. It's a common assumption that inheritances are a major source of wealth inequality, and an NCPA study shows that only 17 percent of wealth for the top 1 percent wealth came from bequests. In actuality, individuals' skills and personal choices are far more important in determining household wealth. Because inheritances are only a minor factor determining the wealth distribution among retirees, using the estate tax as redistributive mechanism is unlikely to have a significant effect on that distribution. In fact, it may be self-defeating if it slows capital formation. The resulting increase in capital returns would make the rich even richer. The second myth, the tax provides significant revenue for the federal government. In fact, it makes up 1 to 3 percent of federal tax revenue. It slows capital formation, reducing tax revenues, lowering wages, employment, federal payroll, and income tax revenues. And according to the Heritage Foundation, if the estate tax were repealed, the U.S. economy would average as much as $11 billion per year in extra output. And an average of 145,000 new jobs per year could be created and personal income could rise by an average of $8 billion annually above current projections. The third myth and final one is the individuals required to pay the tax can easily afford it. It is important to understand that the burden of the tax falls on the recipient, not the giver. Middle class Americans, especially small business owners, are often stuck with a burdensome estate. Small business owners and family farmers generally have large investments in infrastructure. Many don't have large capital assets that can be used to pay the tax, and therefore many heirs have to liquidate the farm or shut the doors on the family business to pay the estate tax. The NCPA views the estate tax as anti-family because it, not only, it does not allow a parent to pass their hard work and their wealth if they have any wealth, to their children. It's anti-farm because farms are especially vulnerable because they hold vast amounts of land which are subject to the estate tax as they are passed from generation to generation. And it's anti-small business. It hurts small businesses that don't enjoy the same tax shelters and benefits as large corporations. 
As Congresswoman Fallon said, I have been involved in small business issues for more than 30 years, serving as the national president of the National Association of Women Business Owners, owner of my own business, and today as a distinguished fellow at the National Center for Policy Analysis. So on behalf of the NCPA and the many small business owners like me and families that might be affected by the actions of this committee, I am in hopes that you will look at this as small business owners are the job creators of this country and we will lead us out of the recession as we did in 2001. They don't need any more taxes, not now and not when they die. Thank you very much and I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Um, there's going to be a series of seven votes coming up, so I'm not going to be asking questions on this round, and I'm going to recognize uh, the rest of the members that are here, and then we will go into recess, and I will come back and ask my questions. So, Mr. Graves. <laughs> 